have you heard of the National Enquirer? How can I explain? Now, the sound of Andrew Lloyd Webber's music has struck a chord with even the most tuneless the world over, with musicals like Joseph, Phantom of the Opera, and Aspects of Love. Currently starring in Aspects of Love with Sarah Brightman is a man whose career hasn't always gone as planned, but we'll find out about all that in a moment. First, let's hear him singing from Aspects, Love Changes Everything, Michael Prade. <laughs> Love changes everything Days are longer Words mean more Love can break the strongest heart Pain is deeper than before Love will turn your world around And that world will last forever Yes, love Love changes everything. Oh, singing there, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Frey. Yeah. Nobody told me, and I was just mining away to your singing there. Did you notice how well I lip synced? I thought it was out. What were you singing? I don't know, but <laughs> it was about two milliseconds behind what it should have been. I wasn't going to say that. And did you notice how I had my hand in my pocket? No, I didn't. That's because the jacket didn't fit. Oh, God. <laughs> it's true. I'm glad you pointed all these things no, no, out. No, I, I, I put the thing. I put. The, I bought this jacket in Dublin. Yeah. Well, I got given this jacket in Dublin actually because I, I did some publicity thing, and it was a really nice colour. I just well, I haven't got it on now. And I, I, I put it on for the show, and I thought, <laughs> it's, it's way too big. So I had to hand in my pocket when I was singing the song. Ah, that's the reason. I that don't believe it. you. The last time I saw you mm. on television, it was at that bloodbath of a Carrington wedding, when you were the Prince of Moldavia. That's right. Was that a merciful release, getting off that show? Um, in many ways, it was. In many ways, it was. I mean, I'd done it for two seasons, mm. and. Um, it's, it's a factory, that episodic television in America. Mm. I mean, you have to do, you get a week or five days to shoot an episode of an hour. And um, in England, when, when we did Robin Hood, we had something like 12 to 14 days, more than twice as long. Yeah. And um, th there's no place for art, really, uh, on, that type of sh on that type of show. You just have to get the shots mm. and you just have to make sure you don't bump into the furniture. Now you had, a, they gave you the grand order, the boot there, didn't they? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they did. They did, yes, they did. Can yes. I be honest? Yes, you can. Bru <laughs> brutally so. <I> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was um, released, shall we say, from my contract. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have fairly, said that. Fairly unceremonious. That's the term, yes. Watch out, the National Enquirer guy's still <laughs> lurking around somewhere. He scares me, that guy. I'm sorry. He's watching. Don't, please don't print anything about me. Anyway, sorry. Yes, so I... Yes, you got the grand, you were the mercifully released from your yes. contract. Yes, I was. Yes, it was on, um, as I recall, it was January the 2nd. Mm -hmm. And I had a hangover. And, um, and the phone went, and I thought I was late for a photo shoot, because I knew there was going to be a photo shoot, you see. So I answered the telephone. And the only thing I remember was, um, I was getting this excuse on, the, on the, the end of the line. Things like, you know, the show was very successful, and now we're going down in the ratings. And I thought, my God, I'm going to be fired. And I was. And, um, but I didn't mind too much because, as I said, I was dying for the Arca Seltzer, <laughs> which I got. Oh, I shouldn't mention that, should I? No. You have a year's description if anybody wants it, of Arca yes. Seltzer, you know. But it also, you'd had an unfortunate experience. Um, the Three Musketeers had, had opened and closed on Broadway yeah. in a week. It's a bit of a record as well, isn't it? It was, in fact, less than that. Oh, was it? Yes. <laughs> yes, one. <laughs> I was, yeah, it's interesting. Do you know, I often get ask, asked about that. Yeah. And in terms of like, was that perhaps, Michael, the most sensible decision <coughs> to, to go and do that show? That's my next question. I wasn't next. <laughs> no, and I would say to them that, in fact, the decision to go and do that show was probably a very good one. The mm. fact that it didn't work is sort of another thing. And yes, I mean, that, well, that is fairly devastating when... But the when critics absolutely... I mean, they can make or break shows, can't they? Well, on Broadway, they do, yes. They, they, they can. I mean, I've said uh, that before, that there is no area for mediocrity on Broadway. Mm. What I mean by that is you have to be a hit or you, you, you have to, mm. you're a failure. There's nothing in between. 
And you must have the New York Times review. And do they sort of come and savage it and then what people don't come back for the second half or what? No. Um, no, it's not quite like that. That we had we had like two weeks of or I forget now because it was some moons ago. Mm. We had a number of previews. And the critics come. It's much fairer than in England and West End where the critics will come on the opening night. Mm. And you might have a bad night, you know. Um, Nevertheless, in, on, on Broadway, they come uh, over four or five days, which is a very fair thing. Mm. And then, then you have your official opening night, which is actually quite relaxed, because you get your friends and your family in. And you have some <coughs> do afterwards, which, because it was in the States, and it, it was, I mean, all the, you know, when, when shows open, you have, I mean, big, big Broadway shows, or West End shows, you have a huge party. And then the reviews come out. Mm. Um, but because the stakes are slightly different in America, and there are f half as less papers. Um, each critic is um, very important to the life of a show, mm. and sometimes devastatingly so, as was the case in our show. But you're obviously, a, um, I mean, you take risks, You're because you mm. left the highly successful Robin of Sherwood, mm -hmm. and you're obviously a fighter because, I mean, did it make you doubt your ability or your judgment? Oh, I'm far too arrogant for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. good. No, actually, it's funny, yes. It can be brutal. Mm. It can be brutal. I, I, I've, um, I've never really paid too much attention to critics. Well, you're enjoying it. You should at the moment, because you're enjoying great success mm. in aspects. Yes. You and Sarah Brightman were brought in to um, revive it, although I didn't know it was sinking. No, I think, you know, audiences had, had dropped off a little. Mm. But, you know, shows have a life. And um, it's, uh, in many ways, I think Andrew, has, Andrew Lloyd Webber is a victim of his own success because by that I mean this show's been running for three years or mm. something like that. And if anyone else had written it, it would be a monumental, huge success. Yeah. But because it hasn't stood up to something like Cats... Oh, they're comparing Fatima, it, sure. Yes, which is grossly unfair. So what have you been doing up until Aspects, then? Um, I've done three movies. Have you? Mm. Yeah. Um, I did a play in Dublin. With a jacket, the too big a jacket with the hand The in. too big a yeah. jacket, yeah. yes. Yeah. And uh, I had my hair cut. <laughs> That notice that, oh, marvellous. <coughs> Excuse me. A nomination there, I think. Yeah. And a musical career, you've been trying... Cause yes. With, with the proceeds of Dynasty, which must have been, you know, that much. The, bigger than that, yeah. Bigger than that. Bigger, <laughs> much bigger. You, you built yourself a recording studio? Yes, I did, a 24... Well, I mean, I, I, yes, I mean, I'm, I've always been interested in music. Mm. And, uh, yes, I put that together in Los Angeles. In fact, went back to university to make... I taught myself how to do it, and I thought, well... If I'm going to invest this much time and effort, I'd better make sure that I really know about the electronic side of things. So what, are you going to make records? Are you now heavily yeah, into some, it? Is at that some point, yes. What sort of stuff do you do? Um, I, should, I should have brought a tape, really. Yes, should we? I could know, have I'm played it. I could have sung with that wonderful lady who's Alison, now, I yes, Alison, Alison whose Lumiere. trousers, where did she get those? I'd like a pair of those. Dublin, I think. Dublin? Yeah, I think she got them in Dublin. I thought they fitted her rather well. <laughs> How long, how long are you going to stay in Aspect, then? I, I'm there till the end of April. Yeah. Uh, did the National Enquirer man drink out of that one? He did. Did he I'll take this Just one? have that joke, one. Joke. <laughs> Steady, he's watching. It's a joke. You stay till April. Yeah, the end of April. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. <clears throat> but I might stay a bit longer. Who knows? Yeah. It's possible. And then, we shall see. There's nothing definite. So yet. you like to keep it open and take chances and... Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what acting's about, isn't it, really? Yes. Um, yes, it is, I think. Well, I mean, you make the best, you make yeah. a, a qualified decision based on, you know, what's placed in front of you. Well, I don't think you're extremely arrogant. I think you've got the right attitude oh. about it. And I wish you lots of love. In Thank lots you. of love. <laughs> lots of love. <laughs> oh, people are dying in aspects. Michael Frey. Thank you. Lots of love in aspect, I said. Anyway, that's all for today. A big thank you to all of my guests and to you, of course. I'll be back tomorrow with the wonderful Albert Finney. And well, how can you describe Sue Pollard and music from M People? So see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you.